my painting will be around that. Hmm. Well, I should put them on, but I'll base coat the arm and do all the um, the paint work, and then I'll apply them on last. It'll be easy to just to uh, glue the armor on literally when it's done. That lets me access all the areas of the apron. Time for the head. Clicked on perfectly and fell right onto the socket. That's nice. I already did this page. Not really what we talked about. Yeah. The slotting in right there and right there. It's already done. Already done all this little guy. The little squiggers. Awesome. That was a fun little kit. I still got, um, as mentioned, we got to wait for everything to glue up and we got to do a little bit more. I'm going with the, um, probably more of a, a yellow tone for all the skin, in a darker sense, and then the bright yellow, green dots on the back. I'll see how long that takes, but I was hoping to put a video of that up too. You just want to make sure that the socket still clears. See how this looks without those arm pauldrons. I've read a lot of medieval books and it's just, it seems kind of funny to have that much extra weight. In Lord of the Rings, they don't run around with that much armor. They usually sort of slog around and slunch around with lots of armor on. All the runny dudes are all freaking... Running around in just leather and studded apparel normally. Sorry about that. One thing I also noticed is that a lot of people always paint as if there's no sense of light. They just paint brightness onto the, the model. I am going to try to paint them more like army figurines, where they're, they're ready for a diorama display, since that's how you kind of do use these figurines, after all, is they're for display and for um, the, uh, you know, the tabletop LARPing style gameplay. Know that that apron covers it up nicely. No, nope. I think I'm gonna leave it mainly like that. It's more of a, a show-off piece now. I'll have to figure out how to fill those in. Worst case, I could definitely cut the ends of this uh, ratchet up and shove that in there. Let me just see if that works right now, actually. I can do 
definitely work. So I'll cut the tails off each one. Make another little clicker like that. Make sure that extra glue side is down. And now he's got some extra little buckles in the back side that give dimension. You can paint these up like the old, the old world savage orcs, I think they were. The Shaman Orcs. There's a kit that I saw as a child that I really wanted. I haven't built that one, but I'm looking to buy it or find it. You know, it's, I ended up with this kit since they had it in the shop. While we're waiting for that to clean up, oh, it's all done, Old Orcs. into the kit Bosch bin for the next time and so there's how it's gonna look when it's done like I said I'll be um painting the armor and all that upcoming so I to assemble it and show you kind of the amount of time it takes to assemble one of these guys it's no joke, they take some time, the non-push one, pit ones take some time. Oh. All the tooling and all that is going to have to get, you know, embellished slowly. But, uh, thanks for watching, and I um, hope to see you again. Bye-bye. So, jump cut or not, that looks like it was nine minutes to assemble it. I'm going to have to double check, but got to love super glue. Let's see what I can get done while painting. I just need to get some paper towel. Nudge again. I'm used to painting with the camera next to me. So I said we're gonna use that one for the. Yeah, I'm gonna make orange orcs. And for that, I'm gonna need to get a number. A nice nub of a brush. So what I just did here is um it's honestly a new tube that wasn't really 
mixed up well so I'm just going to use the brush for a minute to get a, a nice good loading on there and mix up the, the mouth of the tube for what I need. I already rolled the tube around. I usually squeeze and roll it between my hands. Kind of like, you know, starting a fire. Native American style. Just Got that little sprue I need to take care of. So the oil paint is definitely filling the um the moderate details nicely. Years and years ago, I read a an old white citadel um, how to or sorry a white dwarf citadel paints how to thing. I think I'm just gonna go with that. I'm just gonna blast the entire dude in green cover up which yellow and the base primer make green so they made it kind of funny but I'm gonna see how it works just oil paint the whole thing yellow I'll let it dry or actually it's oil paint what am I thinking that's why I love oil paint sorry I thought a little bit about my tattoos I did my own tattoo so I'll be able to mix I'll be able to go to this maybe heavy brown, burnt umber and I'll be able to get his pants done today and I just don't want to hit the armor on his shins. That's going to have to be maybe a mixture of sky blue and the white or it'll be a mixture of maybe ironically that sky blue and that gray. Strange how the one paint kit I got had two double whites but no gray. I mean, you can always make white, but make whitish gray and gray out of white and black.
I've never known anyone to paint Warhammer with oil paint before, so this could be a complete failure. But, you know, like I said, I had it. And that's why I figured I'd make a video of it. That way I'd know how it went, but... I think right now I've seen... Enough to keep on working. It's going to definitely be, be a, um, a base coat, then another wash and a wash. I want to make sure I get all the extra detail back in the face by brushing it out. It's funny how that almost went from being unpleasant to really nice at the same time. On my next models, I'll try some of that stuff and see if it comes out thicker from the can, but so far this is about as good as I'm going to get from it. Wood grain the back out a little bit so that when it does dry, it dries kind of with the texture. So that way, when it's extra, it just it kind of, it um it'll flow out a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural for having extra heavy layers in the streakiness. Hand, and that was the bandages and then everything will be dusted off in dark brown or as mentioned the armor colors that way like for even for the tongs, that overwash, I can, you know, just paint in there. I'll paint that all, say, a dark gray and a mix of Prussian blue to have it be burnt metal. And then I can just wash in a bit more of the yellow. So it'll be a yellow tone. I'll come back and fix up the metal tone. And I can come back and brush bits of yellow on those tips. And that way it, it steps off and lightens it up a little bit. Just right there. And I'll do the same thing when I'm finished off, so that way it adds a bit of the, um, the sake of warmth on there, but it doesn't really force all that one hot light from the one direction. Get all that grain structure going nice and smooth. That way I'm being really happily lazy. I'm using the oil paint to create streaks and add extra muscle texture. So I'm just going you know, to paint along all the muscles and you know, over amplify them. I got a bit of belly missing down there. Got to get that in. Get around the chest. But, um... See how that brown paint opens up for the legs. Well, that paint came out really well. Sometimes the um the tube mixing works awesomely. Other times it doesn't. But 
So I'm going to scoop up a mini palette and knife amount and work off of that with the same brush. Sorry I bumped the camera, but I've never done that before. Um, sometimes happy little accidents, you know? Like, I forgot to paint him. Not sure on what to color paint him, so that's fine. covers on this guy. Well, that covers it great. The other strange thing I've noticed sometimes is that the oil paint, for me, covers over super glue a lot easier than acrylic. Like I just had a bit of a smear right there, if you didn't notice. It kind of um, lightened the, the oil paint up versus leaving a blonde spot. Sometimes the acrylic jumps over cyanoacrylate's um, scabby section when it goes too white from using activator. <laughs> 